Good morning. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to this True Grace Gospel program. My name is Bobby Carmen. I appreciate this opportunity to come into your home by the way of the radio or by the way of the computer. If you would go to uh, YouTube, you would type in my name, Bobby Carmen. You'll get updated on all of our latest videos. Uh, we're bringing the Grace Gospel and taking it around the world uh, from websites and if you would type in uh, on the Facebook the name Paula McKenzie, you would uh, get those same videos and those same views. And she adds quite a bit to it uh, in just summarizing what each tape or uh, what broadcast uh, is saying. But I want you to know that the Grace Gospel is going around the world. And as I think about it so much, uh, how the... the inventions and through technology that God had a plan and God had a plan for the grace gospel to travel around the world by the airways of television by radio and by the way of this internet system of Facebook YouTube and other websites but nevertheless uh, his purpose his plan is for the entire world to hear the grace gospel and when this gospel is preached, and it's not the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus preached in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, this gospel meaning and pertaining to the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now that gospel could not be preached while he was yet alive and while he was walking around in a fleshly body that gospel could not be demonstrated in its death and burial and resurrection. People are confused in the word gospel. The gospel only came by revelation through the Apostle Paul, and those revelations was given to him through the Spirit, through the Holy Ghost, and by understanding God opened his eyes unto what gospel and what grace is all about. We are under a grace gospel. That gospel being the death, burial, uh, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one could preach that. Not the twelve apostles. Jesus himself could not witness to it, especially to the Gentile people. He never preached to no Gentiles. He told his apostles not to preach to the Gentiles. You find that in Matthew chapter 10 verse 4 uh, where he forbid the, the apostles to go out and preach to the Gentiles or any of their cities or towns or whatever. But I want you to know that until you get a unction or a drawing or until you are willing to to sacrifice some of your time just to take this book the King James Version is the only one you ought to invest your trust in listen it's like gossip gossip gets started and when it goes uh, around a few days that thing that got started in that gossip was is distorted it's added to it's took away from and you ain't got the right uh, things that happen and it's the same way with this book this book originated through men in their dispensation and in their time frame in their generation that God had appointed to be born of women to come into the age at that moment and that they would grow up and that God would speak to them make intervention to them and inspire them to write the things in these this book now the old testament consists of 39 books and the men that wrote every one of them and every word of it were inspired by the holy ghost uh, they were spiritually drawn and they were spiritually given those words and instructions and uh, they wrote them down as they received them through the Spirit. It's no difference. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was given uh, through the Spirit to those four men and those four writers. What Paul's 14 books contain, 
the Apostle Paul was inspired by the Holy Ghost. He was led of the Spirit. He was given revelations and revelations through the Spirit. No, it wasn't given on a chalkboard or it wasn't given in a movie as a form of Ten Commandments and all the movies that's been made about Jesus uh, that only show and uh, come into Hollywood around Easter time or around Christmas time. No, that, that's all made up by man. Those words are not the same. Those are actors, and Jesus was not an actor. Amen. Neither were none of the twelve. Neither was the Apostle Paul and all of those that would come to the knowledge of the truth through Apostle Paul's teaching and preaching because it was all given by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Now, when we have it wrote in its purest form, it's God's message and God's intention to us through these 66 books that God completely reveals himself, reveals his plan, reveals uh, the, uh, the foretelling uh, and the future events of prophecy that's going to come, and he give it to men, certain men. And those certain men wrote these things by inspiration, but now we have all of these professors we have all of these wise men in the flesh and have degrees and uh, all of the things that they feel led to do is first change the Bible. Do a different version of it. Do an interpretation through men, not God. God did not inspire the inspiration through the Holy Ghost to change this book. Amen. Can you understand that? What God inspired was the reading of it to the believer and the writing of it. It's already happened. The Apostle Paul's 14 books are strong enough, pure enough, and they was given by inspiration of God, and they're going to close out uh, 2,000 years of generations uh, to the believer because it's strong enough to go to the end of the world. Amen. There's no going to be nothing added to this. There's no apostles that will ever rise up or prophets that will ever rise up that will be sent from God that you can open up the book of your Bible to Revelation and then insert four or five more letters. It ain't going to happen, friend. What Jesus did in his finality, in his walking in the flesh, in his pureness of his death, burial, and resurrection. Friend, it's never going to be redone, reduplicated. Uh, you can make all the movies about it you want to, but until you get it in here, the right here is where it's got to be interpreted, and it's got to be through the Spirit, and it's got to be through the truth. We cannot change the Word of God so that man, in his ignorance, could understand it and read it to get what it means. Amen. This is going to come through the Holy Ghost. This is going to come direct through the Spirit. It's like the author of the book who wrote it from uh, beginning to end. The author and the finisher is what it's, he's referred to of the book. That's this book right here. Because this contains 66 books as it's bound into one because God saw sufficient to give us the complete and full evidence of who he was, what he come to do. And listen to me. It's never ever going to be added unto. Amen. The gospel is the complete understanding of what the word of God was written for. Amen. Now, when you understand the gospel, then you're understanding what God purposed and what God intended. And it is that you would be saved by grace. Grace is the gospel. It's the covenant that you and I are under today. And uh, the whole world is under this grace gospel covenant. Now, that don't mean that they've accessed it. 
that doesn't mean that they've tapped into it because the only way you can get into the grace gospel is by faith. Amen. Faith is the key. Faith is the access to the gospel. And until you have faith in what the Word of God is saying to you, you probably won't be interested in reading it. Oh, you'll get up and go to church, but you won't hear the things that God intended and purposed for every believer. Now, this book is a, being a witness to the whole world which are unbelievers. But this book is the witness against them. Amen. Because they have not believed on the only begotten Son of God. We have to understand what the grace gospel is in order to have salvation that these religions and these hirelings behind the pulpit are uh, telling you of. Listen to me. They cannot give you what they're promising you. They cannot reward you with eternal life. Amen. There's only one, one person that's going to be able to say unto you, Enter now, my good and faithful servant, to the place that was prepared for you for the foundation of the world. Only one can say that. And that one, is his name is Jesus. Amen. If you do not put your hope, your trust, and hope and trust is just a thing of a byproduct of faith. You can't hope unless you have faith, and you can't trust unless you have faith in Jesus and the work that he did on the cross of Calvary. Our world has been doctrinated with religions, and those religions contain practices of the law in the which the Apostle Paul is always warning in his 14 books about the Gentiles not to be brought under any of the law. Amen. And what we have to figure out, why did he say those things and what uh, would it prosper us if we were not under the law? Well, to be under the law is to deny that Christ finished it and fulfilled it. Amen. To be under the law is to be under the curse. What Paul said in uh, Galatians chapter 3. To be under the law, you will feel the sting of death. Because the sting of death is the consequences of keeping the law in which makes you a sinner. Amen. And if you're a sinner, you're guilty and you're going to die. And that death to you will not be just the death of the body which is sure to come on all of us, but it's going to be the death of your toe, uh, soul and hell, and your total body right now is going to be shed. You're going to shed this fleshly, earthly tabernacle, and you're going to be given an eternal body. Listen, saved or lost, you're going to be given an eternal body, and that body is going to be tormented eternally at the second resurrection. And that is the second death, is what Paul says, and that's what, uh, in the book of Revelation, even John says, that it's the second death. It's the second death we're trying to avoid, because we want life. We want to, in our lifetime, find what grace is that gives us an abundance of life in the next eternity where we will not suffer pain or torment or agony. We won't be tearful. We will not be sorrowful because in that one, we will receive the reward that's been promised in, from the entirety of this book. Amen. Uh, a reward for those that have believed on the only begotten Son of God. That's what it's all about. Uh, today, right today, this book is been alienated from most churches. Most religions, most denominations do not use this book as their guidelines. Amen. If they did, you would hear more of the grace gospel preached than you would Moses' law. Amen. Now I'm going to read a little bit to you here. I've always told you I don't preach ideas. I don't preach thoughts or opinions of my own thinking and of my own making. 
But what I do preach and teach of the grace gospel, and even given in relation to the history of it, uh, like last Sunday, how did the grace gospel get here? How did it get here from those foreign countries and the, them foreign uh, places over there? It was immigrated by people. And people come across the ocean on boats and things and brought with them in their mind uh, the truth. And most of them, just like in the world today, they didn't bring no truth. They brought paganism and they brought heathenism and they brought everything that's contemptible to God. But it, nevertheless, it was all brought over here in the form of a boat, and all of them climbed out on the eastern shore and went throughout spreading out, multiplying, replenishing this country, running the redskin Indians plumb back uh, to the middle of the country and settling all along the eastern seaboard. Listen, all God's plan, all God's intention all God's purpose in order for the gospel to spread it had to come through people our forefathers the people that came over on them boats and brought the gospel the truth with them but believe me there weren't very many of them they were few and far between they were like a people uh, like the scripture says that we were just a remnant just a very few but nevertheless, here we are, uh, 550 years into our settling, and here we are. We've got all this technology. My God, we've got TVs, we've got radios, we've got computers, we've got everything to communicate with, to get back over on the other side of the world. But what the gospel is, and what goes over those airways, is not the true grace gospel. The religions have made compromises and they, in order to keep a thumb upon the people in their congregations, to keep them under pressure, to be dedicated to them uh, religions and those choices of those denominations that people have cho chose to serve, they have taught things that are according to the law. Amen. Because the law brings everyone under any one or any 612. I said 12 because I know you can't keep them all. There was never one but one that ever kept them all, 613, and that was Jesus. Amen. And I know there's no human walking the face of this earth uh, before Christ or after Christ that can possibly uh, come in a place where Christ did in fulfilling the whole law. Amen. You just can't do it, friend. The law brings condemnation. The condemnation is death because the law brings the knowledge of sin and we all are guilty and we all must die. And that's why this flesh has to die in order to pay for the sin that's done in the body. But, thank God there's a, made a way of escape a way of redemption that the world has never heard of. It ain't my, by my good works. It ain't by my good deeds that God looked upon me and smiled at me and said, Well, you're so good, I have to save you. No, that's the wrong idea, wrong impression of God. God's grace, His total forgiveness, all of His mercy, all of His kindness, that awaits the person that simply confesses with his lips and believes in his heart, that mind. Your mind is your heart where you make decisions and choices, where you reason and where you teach yourself to follow after good works. Listen, we as a people have got the greatest opportunity in the entire Bible in the entire existence of God. We, as a people, have the power to reach the entire population of the earth. To reach them with the grace gospel would to be spreading life and life more abundantly. Why? Because it's only by one 
grace gospel. Just one plan of salvation. Not 2,000. No. Not religions. Not denominations. Not synagogues. Not big, fine, fancy churches. None of that is required to participate in the grace gospel. The grace gospel will come in the form of the Spirit into the mind of the believer. And when he confesses with his mouth, when she confesses with her mouth, the man or woman, that Jesus was the Savior of the world, the Redeemer of the soul, that's what he's redeeming. He's redeeming the soul. He's not redeeming this flesh. This flesh is rotten. This flesh stinks in the nostrils of God. Amen. Any work that I could possibly do in the flesh, it's a stink in God's nostrils. Amen. Go back and read Isaiah chapter 1. Read the whole chapter to get the benefit. Won't take you three, four minutes. Please invest a little time of your life as a sacrifice to read and study God's Word a little bit. You don't know nothing about God's Word. Most of you are totally ignorant of this book. This book was a step-by-step-by-step -step -step revelation, and in the 39 books of the Old Testament of the Law and the Prophets, it was mostly future it was talking about prophecy. It was talking about things that were set out in the future. But since Jesus, since the birth of Jesus, when he come into a fleshly body and he desired to walk in the flesh, well, when he was born and grew up to be 30 years old, he was under the law. The law of what? The law of Jews, the law of Moses, whatsoever things was written in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, that is what they were under. That's what Jesus was under. Amen. Can't you see that? But he came in a fleshly body to fulfill them. He fulfilled every law, every commandment every doctrine, every principality, every ordinance that Moses gave, Jesus Christ done them, finished them in his flesh. And listen to me. In his three and a half year ministry, Jesus done uh, absolutely thousands and thousands of miracles before their very eyes. He did things in the sight of men that made men look at one another, their mouths would drop open, they could not believe what their eyes just saw. He made dead people come back to life. He made sick people, blind people, people that were eat up with cancers and all of this kind of stuff in their fleshly bodies. They were all healed. The lepers were healed. A leper is a type of cancer. But I want you to know, even though he was a man that was absolutely perfect. The world that he lived in was so imperfect that they would not believe on him. Amen. They rejected their Savior. They rejected their King. Listen to me what I'm saying. They ain't no king and a kingdom coming back to this earth to live in tabernacles made by man's hands. Amen. Do you understand that? When he takes his church out of here, when we, my friend, are joined as the body to him who is the head, when we inherit that, friend, heaven is our home right now in the flesh. You're supposed to be having a heavenly inheritance and a heavenly state of citizenship with Him. Your thoughts are supposed to be governed and ruled by Him. It's like He's on a, a telephone and spiritually that line is connected to every one of His uh, people that make up His body and He's speaking to us through the Spirit and we're getting the revelation of what He wants us to be doing down here. 
Amen. And it ain't about building a world. It ain't about building the things that we see being built. It ain't about the attitudes of the people, of our governors and of our leaders, of our presidents. And It ain't about all of that. It ain't all about the sports world. It ain't all about uh, Hollywood and all of the things in Nashville. This is not about all of the things of the flesh. I have a citizenship in heaven. Amen. Therefore, my speech is about heavenly things. It's about things that are going to come. I am an ambassador for Christ in this world. My citizenship is not in this world. It's in heaven. Amen. But I am down here speaking spiritual things to you and bringing spiritual things into the realm of the category of you hearing it, you being able to read it yourself, <clears throat> take part of it. I'm an ambassador trying to recruit you and give you all of the promises of this book that God intended for you as a believer. Amen. Now you've got to believe me. You've got to believe the ambassadors. You have to believe those that were sent in the name of Jesus to convert people that are in this world out of their evil, wicked ways. Their ways, the church ways, the denomination ways, they're not godly and they're not Christ's ways. Amen. He does not care about money. The, listen to me. His city that he has prepared is not being built by money. It will not ever have anything that was purchased by money in it. You understand? It'll have materials that consist that God only made and that man has never seen. Amen. Listen to me. His ways are so much far above our ways and we can't understand them. We can only dig around and scratch the surface of spiritual things that have been left here through this book and through the reading of it. And through Him, through the Spirit, talking to us and almost reading it to us. Because it was the intent and the purpose of God for these men to sacrifice their time and uh, write these things down as He inspired them. Well, it's up to us to sacrifice our time to read what He wanted read and to perform through the Spirit, the thing where he's showing them to us. Amen. You understand that? It's a simple thing. God's done it all. He's paid the whole price of redemption. We can't do nothing in support for our redemption. We can't do anything in uh, our, for ourselves out of a work or a religion or any law. It's just impossible. It, you just can't do it. That's what I want you to see. He didn't aim for you to do it because He did it. Once and for all, it's finished. His works will never be repeated. The things that He done to accomplish what we call salvation it will never, ever be duplicated again. Amen. He done it once and for all, forever. You hear me? You can't change this around just because men can't understand it. We can't get us two or three professors and go through this and change it so we can understand it. It's to take God out of the equation. And God is the purpose of this whole book. It's to show you who He was in the beginning. And it's to show you His plan for His creation from the beginning until the end. Amen. And it's going to show you all the faults and the failures of people that have preceded us in the history of life on earth. And it's warning us not to do the same things, not to participate in the same type of mistakes and faults and failures that they made, that God don't want us following in those footsteps. He wants you to follow in the way of grace through faith. Amen. And that, my friend, will take away all the things of the flesh. Faith uh, is an invisible thing that becomes visible. Faith is what I believe that I can't show you, 
but my works and my dedication to it, if you would look, would demonstrate it to you. Amen. You know, faith is a, a secret thing until you understand what faith is. Let me read you a couple of scriptures here. This is the Apostle Paul writing in the second chapter of the book of Galatians. He ain't talking this just to some person that he's never met or some stranger, some foreigner. Paul is talking to Peter and the twelve. All eleven apostles and Peter are there. All twelve. And uh, Paul is talking this language to them. Listen to what he said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 14. He said, But when I Paul talking about himself. When I saw that they, that means the twelve apostles, walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, the twelve apostles are not walking upright according to the truth of Paul's grace gospel. What he's saying. He said, I said unto Peter before them all. Does that show you? Paul is calling Peter down and all of the leaven that are with him. And he said, Peter, if thou being a Jew lives after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compel thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? I know that's a little confusing to you in speech. Uh, I know that you might not comprehend completely what this is. But now listen to me. I'm going to explain the situation. Paul has done been called here back in around 35 A.D. He is called into the ministry in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. And God makes him an apostle to the Gentile people. Well, Paul immediately goes out and begins to preach. The Gentile door is opened unto him by the Lord Jesus. Paul is preaching to hundreds and hundreds, uh, if not even thousands, of Gentiles throughout all of Southeast Asia, up and down the coastline, over inland. He's making an attempt to go like wildfire and spread this grace gospel that God has now received and turned to the Gentiles to take a people out of them for his very name's sake. What name would that be? Did he take a name, them people out of the Gentiles for the name of Yahweh? Did he take a people out of the Gentiles for the name of Jehovah? No. He took a people out for him very self through the name of Jesus. Amen. Because if you don't confess salvation through the name of Jesus, you've confessed it through the wrong name. And you just as well as to pray to the sun or the moon or the stars or any other Tom, Dick, and Harry that calls himself a holy man. You hear what I'm saying? Paul is rebuking Peter and the eleven. Listen to me. It's what the scripture says. I gave you scripture verse. Galatians 2 verse 14. Let's read on. He said, Peter, what in the world are you and them eleven doing? He said, you live after the manner of Gentiles. You know what he's saying? Peter, you've gave up quite a bit of the law. You've gave up them sacrificing of animals. You gave up the things that uh, were put in your heart and uh, head along with Jesus back in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. While you were yet young Jews, you were under the law. You were under the sacrifices and the things that were required of the law. He said, but now, but now, he said, Peter, you are living after the manner of Gentiles. What's he saying? They're eating 